What is up guys? My name is Mark Santa Maria. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC vlog. We're here in my palace. My garage where I do all my RC work. At least most of my RC work. In the summer it's just way too hot in the garage. But we're about three days away from the icebreaker at NDRC World. This is going to be my first race. Uh, first race for 2018. So first race of 2018 season for me. And I'm going to say race, big race. And I am way behind on setup. So... I got a lot of stuff to do. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebuild my rear diff. When I say rebuild, I'm not really rebuilding my new diff because I've just bought a brand new diff. Uh, my rear diff on my e-buggy is really chopped up. Uh, a lot of times whenever your diffs get really worn, grooves get into the outdrives, and then also the dog bones get really worn down. So my e-buggy is a conversion e-buggy. As a lot of you guys know, I run for Agama, and Agama didn't actually make an e-buggy, so I convert or an, an SV e buggy. So I converted my old e buggy into an SV. So I was running the original rear diff. So I probably have maybe a little over two seasons on this diff. So it's long overdue. But I'm going to show you guys how to build a diff, which I'm not going to say that I know the right. Let's see. How can I put this? There's several ways to build a diff. I'm going to build it the way, I'm going to show you guys how I build it, and the way I built it, I actually got, I built it very similar to how Ryan Lutz built diffs, so it's got to be somewhat right, and I base all my stuff on how well my stuff finishes, so as you guys know, I race a lot, I'm not the fastest guy on the planet, but I finish a lot of my races, and my, my program is pretty solid, so you guys can pretty much trust what I'm doing, so I'm going to build a diff. Let's see how this works. All right, so first and foremost, I try to take everything out of the package. Uh, golly, look at me, I'm not even freaking prepared. Grab my scissors. This is a great tool bag, by the way. If you just wanna pack all the tools that aren't like drivers and things like that, because I got a really cool driver tool case also. All right, so let's take everything out of here. All right, so I unpacked everything, put it in my VRP dip tray, which if you don't have a VRP dip tray, they're pretty freaking cool, and I'll show you why here shortly. I always like to put a nice clean paper towel out um, just to make sure that there's no like excess dirt or dust that gets in my dip. So now I got a nice clean surface. A um, couple of other things I like to do, Take a little bit of sandpaper. And this is 150 grit. Get a little sandpaper. And I like to sand the the face, the open part, the open face of your diff case. Or diff case your uh, your diff. And this just basically flattens it out so you make sure your gasket seats perfectly. So that's nice and sanded down. Another thing I like to do, which Billy at Agama doesn't say you have to do, I personally like to do it just to make sure. So I drill holes in my, in my diff case my diff housing so whenever you the the screws the screws that go into the diff they go into these little holes right here and what happens is pressure builds up behind them and there's no way to get the air out so what I've seen is the the actual screw will back out a little bit so what I like to do is I like to drill a little hole on the other side Probably use a drill. Put it just an electric piece. All right. So I got the holes drilled on the other side of the screw holes. 
So it lets the air come out. So you can drill, you can screw them down really, really tight. You don't have to worry about pressure building them behind them. All right. Next thing I need is I need my O-ring grease. So first thing, I like grease. I get a greaser O-rings. I'll be honest, guys. I haven't built a diff in maybe three months. So if you watched where I was unpacking, I like dropped something and I couldn't get it out. These little your uh, diff shims. So these diff shims go on the inside of the diff, right on top of your O-ring there. So it's gonna sit in there just like that. Then you wanna put a little bit of grease on your oh, right. the Pagamas have a, they have two, two bearings extra stability. A lot of people don't like it, but you know what? I've never blown a diff, diff bearing. So then you put a bearing on each side. You put a bearing on a drive. Make sure you grease your out drive. Then you insert. And what I like to do is I like to get a needle nose. And basically hold down that shim so it doesn't get pushed up. There we go. And then you put your, your little pin. Make sure it's shimmed. A lot of people leave that shim out of there. They forget to put the shim in there. They don't know what it's for. And then you have the pin just rubbing up on the O-ring. So the key there is to make sure you grease your O-ring and make sure you grease the out drive before you put it in. So what it's gonna look like when you actually got it in there is just like this. And you wanna make sure it spins free, which just spins free. Sometimes whenever you put them in, you can, it's almost like there's pressure, like it's binding. That means it's not sitting flush. Um, sometimes that means that you got pressure built up in your O-ring. Um, something's not lined up or it's not pushing all the way but this is spinning free so we're good there and we gotta do it on the other side put your pin in there make sure it spins nice and free and the gear part of the gear side of your diff is built so what I like to do is I like to put just a little bit of grease around the edge for the, the diff gasket and then I'll go ahead and seat the gasket. This is your diff gasket. I'll go ahead and seat it in there just like that. Line the holes up. And then put it where the pin is going straight up and down. And I'm going to show you why. So now I got my, my uh, diff gasket sat, put in there. I got my out drives in, everything's spinning free. So now it's time to put oil in it. So first off, Put your first gear, your first, you got your little spider gears, these little ones. And then you got your big, I guess your big spider gear, your big diff gear. Put one in there. Make sure it sits nice and flush, just in there like that. Then you take your diff oil. I use PT diff oil. Okay, hopefully I have enough in here. It's probably enough for one diff. Fill it up about a quarter way. That's probably a little more than a quarter. Let that sit. So this is why these VRP dip trays are kind of cool. So it can't get knocked down. Now there's a reason why I put the diff oil in there and then decided to put these gears together. It's because I like to let it, I like to let the The bubbles come out of the diff, the air come out of the diff. Alright, so then you set one side up, 
and then there's these little these little grooves I don't know if you can see that there these little grooves in your diff pins you want the one on the bottom facing up I can hear my wife talking in there got a bad feeling she's gonna come in here you set it in there give it a little spin to make sure it's sat do your other side that's how you want this set up just like that and now you want the groove to be facing down not up this time okay now I give it a little bitty spin here to make sure that they're all sat so now I can see that all my gears are sat in there there's a little bit of air in there but we're gonna let those come out and then you're gonna fill it up to about the top of the gears the spider gears not all the way to the top because you're gonna have too much overrun so fill it up to the top of the spider gears just like this As you can see it just kind of covers up the top of the spider gear and then let it sit for the air to come out all right so we let it sit, all oh, the air is out, I'll probably let it sit for maybe 10 minutes. Now here's where a lot of people get confused. Not really confused where they do it wrong. A lot of people, what they'll try to do is they'll try to put this other gear on here because it makes sense, right? And then you put the gear to get the diff together. Don't do that. It makes an incons inconsistent diff because you're not sure how it sits. What you want to do is you want to set this gear on top. Make sure it sits right in the middle. There we go. It sits right in the middle. So now it's sitting perfectly in the middle, flush. And you want to wipe off the excess oil. And I didn't get that much because I filled it almost perfect. You want to line it up perfectly up and down when you're looking at it. And then I like to make sure there's not a single bit of grease on the actual diff case. So I know for sure it's sitting flush. So now you can see it's all dry on the outside and the, the gear is right in the middle. So now I know that it's perfectly up and down. I'm going to take my diff, since my diff my other side of my gear, the gear side of my diff is up and down. I'm just going to set it right there on top. And line the holes up. And you push to make sure it's nice and sat. And you can turn one side and the other side turns. It's good. Which, by the way, is my rear diff. And I'm using 5K. PT Oil 5K. On my uh, Agama, a lot of people run 20, 20,000 in the front, 3,000 in the middle, and 5,000 in the back. I run 10.55 and I really like it. So now this is set. Time to do the time to screw it in. This is another key part. All right, so when you drill it, the first one you want to drill in, you want to try to push it on there as much as you can so it's flush. And the first one you want to drill in, you don't want to drill it too fast. And you want to stop with about two millimeters left. So you don't want to drill it all the way in. The reason why they're not all the way drilled in is one, whenever you're using a power drill or an electric screwdriver, whenever you're drilling it in, it has a tendency to get hot. And when it gets hot, it actually melts that plastic. So you got a, you got a tendency to, when you tighten it a lot, it will actually strip that plastic out. So for me not drilling it in all the way, I'm letting the actual plastic cool down. And I'm also making sure I got a nice tight, tight screw whenever I screw it in with my hand. So now that I let it cool down a little bit, I'm going to go to the one I started with, I'm going to go until it stops, and then go to the next one across. Go until it stops. Nice and set. And there's your diff. Alright, so I got my diffs out. Or my diff. Just one diff. Um, first off, I noticed that I'm leaking I'm leaking grease, so my O-rings are obviously bad. This is definitely a blown out diff. Um, you can see right here how they're, it's kind of notching, whereas on this one it's perfectly clean. Um, all around the diff is notching, and then also it's obviously leaking fluid, so it definitely needed to be 
I could probably rebuild this, but I had the extra diff in anyway. I had an extra diff in stock anyways, or in my stock. So I'm just gonna keep this. I'm gonna find any parts out of it. Now I'm gonna put my diff in. This is a key part of putting the diff in. Is you have to grease the diff gear. I use the Premier White grease gear grease from Protec. And I put a generous amount of white grease all the way around. Alright guys, all done. I put my diff back in. I ended up replacing one of the bleeder caps. I noticed there was a little bit of oil leaking out of one of my bleeder caps. I cross-threaded one of this, the bleeder screws, unfortunately. But I put my diff back in, replaced my, my drive shafts, my dog bones. And this car is actually ready to go. I've already been working on this car for a while, so... It's been my club racing car, so it's it's the only thing that I really need to do is replace that rear thing. So this one's ready for the icebreaker. But if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, and then tomorrow, we work on my nitro buggy. See you then.